Hello and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good day to everybody. My name is uh, Sanjay Tiwari. I happen to be a long time member of the SSSP and I also happen to be the managing committee member of the Indian Sociological Society. Uh, it's the apex body of professionals of uh, sociology here in uh, India and uh, I'm in the board of that uh, uh, society for a six year term ending in December 23. I am also the honorary director of the UP Athletics Association affiliated with the Athletics Federation of India and a state coordinator of the IAAF Kids Athletics Program. And uh, my role with the, as a teacher, uh, with a senior faculty member is there with the mammoth uh, PSU of uh, India, the Life Resource Corporation of India. I teach social security and other schemes over here. So it's my pleasure to be invited by UPFLSP and accept my small, uh, but I think uh, a useful presentation and uh, through this presentation, I will try to uh, discuss something on the uh, on this very important and very big, rather very mammoth scheme of the PMGKAY or the Prime Minister's free food distribution scheme, uh, which has many insights, many inroads, and many learning processes for the Western world and for other parts of the world also. So. Uh, through this presentation, I will try to give my inputs on the scheme and I will try to find out a way as to how this scheme has helped a lot um, in combating with the menace of, uh, you can say, COVID. So being a sociologist, uh, uh, I think it's necessary for me to, to discuss about the sociological perspective. And uh, uh, when I talk about the sociologics, sociological perspective I deem it appropriate to talk about the uh, to talk about the sociological perspective for food and so the sociological perspective for food uh, it basically marks a very social difference means not for the very you can say fluent and very flourished nations but for the other parts of the of the globe where food still is a priority and is a necessity a basic necessity. So but, but for, for other parts of the world, I can say that food basically it strengthens uh, the social bonds and it signifies the, you can say, uh, information about our identities, our, you can say, taboos, our habits and the cultural heritages. In context to India, uh, I can say that the economic growth in India has made a very gradual progress in alleviating and eliminating poverty and ensuring the food supply uh, for the poor and and however this still remains on the you can say priority list of government despite the government going for small small measures during the past uh, decade or so uh, the prices of the food naturally they play a very significant role in the survival of the poor and alleviation of poverty and during the times of COVID, this, uh, you can say, uh, this line assumes even more significance. The government of India has been sponsoring, as I have told, that many such schemes, which are specifically designed to serve the poor, whether they are subsidizing some, uh, you can say, health utility schemes, giving some other security benefits to the poor, etc. But above all, the food distribution system is the most prioritized. And basically, it is the you can say that that food for me is the major source uh, where government can see uh, to address the inequalities. Because uh, you will agree that uh, when we talk about the Malthusian theory, and uh, the Malthusian theory basically says that uh, uh, that a person will not grow and not even think of growing or developing uh, to the another to another stage unless and until he or she gets the basic necessities of life which are food shelter and uh, you can say clothing so first of all food thereby it's very important for us to talk about uh, about the food and the distribution system well the other aspect when i say that it's very important for food to
to be given to given priority it goes for the distribution system it goes for the you can say deficit of the budget of the governments also so on one hand the, one hand the government has to provide uh, the pro the food free food to its uh, you can say uh, its people and, and and on the other hand it has to ensure that this uh, free food distribution uh, goes for a very balancing effect because it affects the uh, fiscal deficit of the government uh, when we talk about the united nations over here we know that the united nation has has on many occasions warned that the world is far from achieving the uh, the sdg or the sustainable government goal number 2 which uh, says that we have to end the hunger by hunger by 2030 and naturally we see that the united nations has called has called upon the nations to trans- transform their food systems to address uh, this very uh, pertinent uh, uh, crisis so thereby this uh, topic assumes very important now when we as sociologists uh, tend to study inequality we ought to study various and many factors such as distribution of the income education wealth health etc and rather distribution or rather access of food for me is also one such vital instrument which needs to be analyzed or rather studied or investigated so when i got this opportunity to present something before all of you and particularly from the global south i saw that this this will be very important for the rest of the world to know that how this uh, this pm gkay uh, food distribution free for distribution system has has seen india grow during this uh, uh, this covid period also i the, in the in the later part of my slide i'll try to rush uh, uh, rush my slides also because of some some time limitations also so in order to study the various patterns of social inequality we should study basically the patterns of food distribution now particularly from the underdeveloped or the developing nations and spe- specifically from the global south and more precisely more specifically from india and you know india is the you can say is the largest democracy in terms of uh, uh, of population and second most uh, populated country and you see that india is now amongst the uh, fourth fifth or sixth nations when it comes to the uh, to measuring in terms of economy also so so india has seen a lot of growth during this period and this covid has affected not only india but all parts of the world so our our distribution systems our investigating systems have have need to now need to be revisited in context to this covid you can say uh, uh, disease this pm gkay or the prime minister free food distribution system is a very ambitious scheme launched by the prime minister of india mr narendra modi now this provides for 5 kg of rice or wheat per person and we have been providing the government of india has been providing this meal to you can say almost 800 million beneficiaries just just close your eyes and just ponder that what is 800 million beneficiaries under the national food and security act so this scheme as i to as i as i told you has been initiated by the prime minister modi is called to address the continuing economic uh, stress caused by the pan- pandemic and this basically addresses the public in, in uh, the public distribution system which have been in place since the independence in 1947 and it addresses at uh, the poor for giving uh, you can say uh, free ration to the poor people during the time times of uh, covid when people are you can say devoid of of a job or devoid of other facilities now at a time when there is a economic slowdown all over and the given fact that food grains are high in prices this scheme has shown light of the day for the for the vulnerable classes now basically i'll let you know the remarkable portion of this scheme is that that there is no loopholes in the distribution strategy because it there is a free distribution system and the there is a direct benefit transfer to the individual who or the family who is getting this food now inequality in form of non provision of the basic necessities of 
of life that is food and in particular during and after this pandemic had it not been so the inequality inequalities would have seen uh, even you can say a more wider gap now the food activist what happened is that the food activist started saying now the government should extend this scheme again and again and again for months all together well the government has given a heed to all these things they have paid paid an attention and in april only in the first part of april only the prime minister announced that this scheme has now been extended till september 2022 means for another 6 months it was it was uh, terminating on 31st of march so they have extended it for more 6 months now the politics these these food activities activities do is also one thing which we ought to study or or analyze the politics through food activists is now in the process of influencing the you can say the patterns of participation as these food activists may seem legitimate in their demands because they say that you have to address inequality but they are more illegitimate when it comes to visualizing the perspective of the government because you have to see the governmental aspect also and when he talked about the physical deficit also the with the where from where did the government try to generate the revenue because for the past few years you can say during this uh, covid period naturally there is a fall in the gdp there is a fall in the productivity there is a fall in the manufacturing and trading system so from there is the is the revenue generation now this contribution this analysis which i am trying to present is i am trying to present it uh, it is it as a very genuine uh, you can say attempt to to analyze those inequalities which might have risen to you can say unscalable heights but for this scheme this will this analysis also tries to uh, study the paradigm shift in change of the patterns of the political parties who in their aim of achieving political mileage go go to an extent of advocating the concept of freebies and crippling uh, the lower or the you can say lower middle class means okay you food food is the basic necessity you can provide but when the political parties go and say that there will be a free electricity distribution system now here the system tends to change gears because food is the basic necessity for for survival but free electricity is not the basic necessity for survival so there are many other issues which uh, which can be uh, discussed in the later part of this slide now now uh, hurriedly the public distribution system is it involved it evolved or rather it was generated it was born I, or rather it grew as a system of management of scarcity scarcity so distribution of food grains at very affordable prices now that was at affordable prices over the years this pds or the public distribution system has become an important part of the governmental policy and not only in india many other governments all over all of the globe do try to make subsidize food or subsidize other goods also uh, to some uh, uh, some parts of the society whom they say that they are vulnerable now this pds is operated under the joint responsibility of the we in india we have the uh, the union structure is the federal and the central structure so state has the authority or has the responsibility to enforce the schemes which the central central government gives to the state now under this uh, pds the present presently the commodity namely as we have the wheat we have rice we have we have sugar or we have some kerosene oil etc this is being given to the center for the distribution but that was the basic public distribution system this free distribution system is a change now because in this free distribution system we have pulses we have grains we have salt and we have edible oils and some spices also so here is the system the pds of essential commodities was in existence i have told you in the country on previous occasions also from 60s there was a scarcity scarcity during the world war during the war between pakistan in the 60s and and the war and the war with china also in 60s to uh, you can say so pds had substantially contributed to the containment of rise in food grain prices and ensured access of food to the urban consumers also now as the national agricultural production had grown after the green revolution of india 
the outreach of PDS was extended even to the tribal community centers also. And so what it happened that gradually we did see a fall in the poverty index also. As of today, as of today, till to, from 2011-12 till 2021-22, there has been a 10% reduction in the poverty poverty index. So it's it's a remarkable achievement, uh, you can say. Now the need for the PDS in the current context rises. I have told you that the sustainable development goal to zero hunger. We have to eliminate hunger by 2030 as uh, the United Nations has also embarked upon. And the need of the PDS naturally not to go into the green was due to the COVID-19 uh, or the Corona crisis, you can say. Now, according to the WHO, the worst effects are yet to come. In 2020, analysis of WS and Kosangi have stated that most health analysis, analysis predict that this virus will continue and we are seeing this. We are seeing different mutations different sorts of mutations of this coronavirus over the years, over the months. So we see different sorts of of, of, of this coronavirus changing its, its, uh, its shape and coming to us in the form of new challenges. So the food security and nutrition therefore uh, basically are at risk if in case we do not provide because in, in the future days also we can see uh, we can see and uh, envision some lockdowns again in many states in many countries in other parts of the world also. So already before the outbreak of the coronavirus, according to the latest state of food security and national nutrition report, some 2 billion people faced to food insecurity. So this study therefore assumes so much of significance because, because as sociologists, I see food as a major component of addressing uh, this uh, uh, inequality inequality factor. So since 2014, these numbers have been climbing and and contributed by the coronavirus virus also. The COVID-19 pandemic is undermining all the effects to achieve the goals for food for all naturally. So India's contribution because we are of uh, a country of 135 crores. So for us. Food, addressing the food uh, requirements of the vulnerable class was a very, very, you can say, big job. And now for almost more than two years, inclusive of this September 2022, the government of India will be providing 80, will be providing free ration to 80 million people. There have been deaths due to COVID, but there hasn't been a single death due to starvation. So the complex dynamics triggered by these COVID lockdowns, they intended to contain the disease are, have created conditions for major disruption of food system due to, uh, you can say, unemployment, due to people not going out for work, due to factories and shops and outlets being closed down, blah, blah, blah. The most recent estimates indicate that between 83 and 132 million additional people, including 32 to 80 million people in low-income countries, that rely on food imports and every every import or export has, has been affected due to these lockdowns. So, and the study says that they will experience food insecurity as a direct result of the pandemic. Say somebody exports wheat from X country, country to Y country. The exports have been affected. The imports have been affected. So, it, it, so the issue goes like this. For example, India Prime Minister has just now uh, uh, announced that we, we are we have 7 million tons of additional food, additional grains that we can supply it to, to the to these striped chicken countries such as Nigeria and other, other parts of the African countries. So this is only possible once the systems are in place and there are no lockdowns or no restrictions of COVID. Now at least 25 countries including, you can say, Lebanon, Yemen, South Sudan, they are at a risk of significant food uh, deterioration. Latin America, you can say the number of people requiring food assistance has almost tripled in 2020. These are the statistics of the United Nations, nothing which I can add upon over here. So food productivity could also be affected in the future, if specifically if this virus is not contained. Until date, we see that it is popping up. It is putting its head down, head, head up and again and again. 
number of overlapping and reinforcing dynamics have emerged that are affecting food system and food security and nutrition thus far including disruptions to the supply sub, food supply chain and as i have said loss of incomes and livelihood and naturally what has happened is that that these disruptions have occurred to the social protection programs of food and other things also not only food you can say uh, the pecuniary benefits which which were used to be provided to the vulnerable class have also gone a uh, uh, you can say uh, undermining effect so but food food is a priority hence food subsidization and free food hasn't been stopped rather the pds system has changed gears in the form of the free food distribution uh, system now widening social inequalities i have already said the global economic slowdown triggered by the pandemic as well as the spread of the disease itself has excavated social uh, you can say existing social inequalities in many countries where food is basically is still a very uh, uh, a very you can say vital uh, uh, necessity so these inequalities are affecting rights as well as access to the basic needs of food water and other health care so if in case we do not have food the problems of health care are also are also over there and they have they have larger implications for the food security and the nutrition food security already disproportionately affects those people naturally who are experiencing poverty and covid has added to these issues according to who one in three people lack access to safe drinking water and basic washing facility so if in case we do not have food water is one next step ahead of food people without access to these services which are vital for health and safe food preparation are more likely to con- to come in contact with the disease and and as as a matter of fact they can compound the existing uh, inequality coming to the scheme of the prime minister garib kalyan garib means poor kalyan means welfare and means food yojana means scheme of the prime minister uh, modi's free food distribution scheme a scheme it is a pro- it is a pro- a process of the atmanirbhar bharat bharat means india and atmanirbhar means atmanirbhar is a hindi word atmanirbhar means self reliant india and under the self reliant india we have many constituent we have the constituent of the uh, 5 lakh rupees free distribution of health scheme we have the free distribution of water free distribution of 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 a gas cylinder etc uh, etc et and amongst this atmanirbhar bharat is the pmgkay phase 1 and phase 2 of the scheme the data is before you you can just go through uh, this data since uh, this video is already put on the will be all will already be there on the website so you can just give it a cursory glance of what i intend to say more than 81.35 crore people will be provided and are be provided are being provided 5 kg per month free of wheat rice per person along with 1 kg of pulses to each family per month there are different states all the states are being provided and states overall under the national food and security act they are distributing this this thing to further uh, to the further uh, their respective population now the eligibility for the pmgkay is people below the poverty line we have the antyojana anyojana there is a set criteria of who people who will get say i will not get it because i am under a particular annual income i will not get it but those in the lower class or the lower middle class will get it so all primitive here it is all primitive tribal houses will get the landless agriculture laborers the marginal farmers the rickshaw pullers hand cart pullers <coughs> the small street vendors etc all these persons will get uh, this scheme here is the data the total nfs ration cards over here we have the central allocation of 19.41 metric tons allocated is this all this data is still uh, we can say september 21 i have this data till the month of september 21 uh, took from the ministry of finance and ministry of food and security website 
so the data is before you for distribution of rice, horses, grains, and other things. It's it's just in front of you. This is the Prime Minister's Garib Kalyan package, which I which I told you is the complete package, and the free food distribution is one component of this package. And today I'm talking or discussing about only this one component of package, and that that is food. So here are the different components of giving benefits to the women account holders, then giving giving uh, some subsidies to the persons or who are disabled, who are different differently abled persons, then to force to landless laborers for the prime minister's housing scheme, etc. The data is over here. Then here we have different things. Here we have the package and we have the allocation of food grains. This slide tells you about the allocation of food grains. Now the GOI resolved that it would not allow anybody, specifically the poor people, to fall down to the COVID-19 due to non-availability of food grains. This is the basic, uh, basic crux of this of this. Uh, you can say this scheme. 80 crore individuals. We are 1.30, so it goes with 1.30, 130 crores, so it goes to more than 80 crores. Means over roughly two thirds of the Indian population is covered under, uh, you can say, this scheme, and so this naturally is free of cost. Here we have the pulses. How are the pulses being distributed? Now through this scheme, we are trying to reduce the inequalities. I have already just told you as a sociologist, the distribution of food grains by government of India has helped in reducing and or rather lessening the gap amongst the community during this period of COVID. Moreover, this free distribution of basic necessities has entailed the population to stand now of its own. Now, since we are the market is opening and the GDP of India is growing also, the World Bank and IFM, IMF has projected a great GDP of 8.29 in 2023. So we are looking more positive now. And since COVID is opening up gradually, so we think that, I think this, this, this we, we, we could be able to capture this starvation demand. The successful vaccine vaccination now also has added to this free distribution system. We have, we have, we have vaccinated more than 190 crore people means more than 90% of the Indian population is now fully vaccinated. So this is this has also aided or other helped in this free public food public distribution system. It is well applauded by the people of the of India. In the recently held four major elections, the uh, the legislative elections of the four major states, the Prime Minister Modi led a uh, BJP party got a thumping majority, you can say, and specifically in the state of Uttar Pradesh, which is the largest populated state of 24 crore, they got with a thumping uh, majority. Political mileage versus freebies, I have already told you that distribution of free electricity or other basic necessities has to be stopped. The government understands very well that freebies are not supposedly to be carried out for long because it affects the, for the fiscal deficit of the government. The government also knows that there are budgetary constraints and the economy now needs to bounce back post-COVID to make good the costs involved in the PMGKY. To conclude, I'm, I'm, I think I do not know the time. Yes, yes. So I just rush up. This is the world's largest food security scheme launched by the government of India to fight the COVID-19 induced economic disruption. As I have told, it's a 5 kg full package of wheat, rice and other important edible oils and salt and other things. All beneficiaries of the targeted public distribution system for the Antyodhya Yojana and the priority household ration card holders, they are all are eligible for food gains under this scheme. And the PMGKY is a great blueprint for the Western part to learn as how can we try to reduce inequalities through this free food distribution uh, system. It's a blueprint for supporting the poor people and addressing inequalities. 
Now, through several schemes and packages under the PMGKY, the government has helped the poor citizens continue their daily lives despite their inability to work. We have some references over here. You can go through all these things. Uh, and I thank you all very much for giving me this uh, patient hearing. And during the course of uh, this uh, uh, this conference, when we will be uh, we all be we will be there virtually. I'm open. I will be open to the house for for your questions. Thank you, Triple SP, uh, for being, for giving me this opportunity. Please take uh, due care. And those who have not yet uh, taken their vaccination, please do get vaccinated. Thank you very much.